All right, so we're going to do one more example here uh, with trying to set up triple integrals in rectangular coordinates where um, we're given some surfaces which bound the region, and we want to figure out how to set up the integral and, and possibly set it up in different orders. So the surfaces that we have here, um, z equals 0, so the y z plane, right? Um, z equals 2y, also a plane. It's this plane coming in at an angle like so. And y equals 4 minus x squared, that's a parabolic cylinder. So it's this cylinder that, that wraps around the back. And we want to think about setting up the triple integral over e of some function. We're not even going to bother to say what the function is. And we're going to do it um, for, uh, for, let's see, let's say we do the orders um, uh, dz, dx, dy. Let's try doing dy, dz, dx. And let's try doing um, could we do x first? Yeah, we can do x first. Um, dx, um, dz, dy. We'll try these three orders, right? We could, we could try all six, but let's not get carried away. Let's do these three. Let's see what we can do. Um, so let's label these one, two, three. And let's think about how we would describe our region in each case. So for case one, well, we're going to do z first. So we need bounds on z in terms of x and y. And so we're going to say what? So z, well, it starts at 0. And it ends at 2y, right? So the way you want to think of this is, so think of this, the parabola here sitting in the xy plane right, bounds this, this region here in the xy plane. And for every point in that region, we, we think about coming up from below. We enter when we hit the xy plane. We go up. We exit when we hit the other plane here that makes the top of the surface. Right? So z goes from 0 to 2y. Next, we want to do x. Let's see. Well, x, let's see. x starts on this half of the parabola or really starts on that half, ends on that half, right? So x starts here and ends there. Um, so I guess I'd have to solve here for x, right? I'd have to say, okay, so x would be what? x squared would be 4 minus y. So we've got a positive and a negative square root. So we'd say minus root 4 minus y less than or equal to x less than or equal to square root four minus y. And then finally, we just have to say, well, what's, what are the y values that we have here? So now we're just looking for, as numbers, what are the smallest and biggest y values that we see? Well, y starts here at 0, ends over here at 4, right? Because when x equals 0, y equals 4. OK, like so. And so that would give me, that would give me this for my integral. It would give me the integral from 0 to 4, the integral from minus root 4 minus y to plus root 4 minus y, and then from 0 to 2y, f of x, y, z, dz, dx, dy, right? And now, it's not one of the orders that I, uh, that I asked for, but you probably, as you're setting this up, you're probably thinking, oh, well, you know, let's do kind of, a, I don't know, like a 1.5 here. You probably realize that the, the most natural order, I think, for setting up this integral would have been to do, to do dz, and then do dy, and then do dx, because then rather than, than going like this, you'd be able to say, well, actually, uh, y goes from 0, y goes from 0 
to 4 minus x squared, and x goes from minus 2 to 2. That's, um, that's a little bit more natural, right? And, and so then you would go, um, if you did that way with dy and then dx, if you had dy here, then dx, um, well then this would be a 0, that would be a 4 minus x squared, that would be a minus 2, that would be a 2, and that at least seems a little bit simpler, right? Um, maybe not, depending on what the function is, but it seems to me like that's a little bit simpler. Okay, what about, uh, what about the second option? Um, now it's, it's a little bit trickier because, you know, we, we've kind of, doing z first seems like sort of the natural setup, you know, with, with the stuff that we're given here, right? So how do you do, how do you do y first? Um, so now what you have to think of is you're, you're coming in from this way, right? You're heading in. You're coming in kind of along, you know, parallel to the y-axis. You enter when you hit this plane, right? And so you hit the plane, you go in, and then you hit that parabolic cylinder at the back, and then you exit the region, right? So y starts at, well, we have to solve here for y. So y starts at z over 2. And exit, when it hits the cylinder, the cylinder given by 4 minus x squared. Okay? Um, now what do we have to do next? Now we do z. Okay. So now we have to think a little bit. Um, we're doing z and then x. So in the xz plane, what we actually have to do here is we have to think about well, what, what is sort of the, you know, what is the shadow of this thing on the xz plane? What do we actually have in the xz plane? This is, it's not so easy to see um, what we have, but we can, we can play around a little bit because we could say, well, okay, um, we have that, that y equals z over 2, and we also have that y is equal to Four minus x squared, right? Um, so that's so z over two would equal to four minus x squared. Where, where, where do I have these? You know, what, I'm describing an intersection. What intersection am I, am I describing? I'm describing the intersection of the plane, this plane, with the cylinder. I'm describing this curve, which is here in blue. Okay, All right. But what I'm really doing is I'm describing the shadow of that curve on the xz plane. So what I have is that z is equal to 8 minus 2x squared. So in the xz plane, I have starting at 8 and going down like that, right? 2 minus 2. So now I can see, ah, yes, okay, z starts at 0, and it ends at 8 minus 2x squared, right? That's, this one's a little bit harder to see. One way to think about this is, is imagine that you're standing kind of far out on the, on the positive y-axis, and you're shining a light at this object, uh, and you're looking at what kind of shadow does it make here on the xz plane. It makes a shadow that looks like that. Okay, and so for those z values, we can finally say that x, x is going to run from minus 2 to 2. All right? And so that lets me set up my integral. And we're going to get minus 2 to 2. Then we're going to get 0 to 8 minus 2x squared. And then we're going to get z over 2. To 4 minus x squared. And this ordering was doing y and then z and then x. Um, oh, with, I guess I had a function in there. f of x, y, z. We could just set f equal to 1 if you want and calculate a volume. That's certainly something that you could do. Um, I would say that this order here looks like 
an ordering which would probably give you um, that volume without a terrible amount of work. Um, probably the easiest ordering we've seen so far is this kind of 1.5 ordering, right? Um, doing, doing Z, then Y, then X for the, for the particular layout that we've been given. Okay, um, so let's, uh, let's do this last order and then we'll, we'll call it a day. Um, by the way, one thing as I'm, as I'm setting this up, one thing that you might, uh, you might wonder, and I'm, for three, I think I'm not gonna write down the integral because we're, we're running out of room. If we have the inequalities, we're gonna know how to do the integral. Um, you might be wondering what exactly you're computing when you put some function in here for a triple integral, right? For, for double integrals, you have this idea of computing volume under a surface, right? Um, so what are you computing here? I guess, I guess, you know, this is now you're doing like something like w equals f of x, y, z. You know, the graph of this would be in four dimensions. So, I mean, you could think of doing some sort of four dimensional volume, but that's sort of hard to think of. So typically what people will do when they're thinking about triple integrals is they probably think of this function as some sort of, of density. So you think about, you know, you have a region in space, you have some sort of density, this might be a mass density, or maybe it's a charge density, or, or, or whatever it happens to be, and you're, you're trying to compute the total amount that you have over the region. You're gonna do that um, using an integral like this, okay? Um, okay, last one x first. So if we're doing x first, what, is it, what does it look like? Well, one of the things you'll notice is that this plane here, right, the equation of that plane doesn't depend on x. So any line of constant x doesn't see that plane, right? Um, you know, worst case scenario is, is you're, you're coming in along a line which is actually passing through the plane, but then it's just going to kind of travel across like that, right? It's going to travel from one side to the other. And you say, where does it begin and end? Well, notice where it begins and ends. It begins and ends on this blue curve, right? Which is given, well, in terms of Z, it's given like this. In terms of Y, it's given like that, right? Okay, so we can, we can deal with that. Um, and we got to think about, well, we want, um, let's see, we want it in terms of Z, right? Because we're going to do Z next. You could do Y if you want. It actually doesn't, doesn't matter that much. Um, so X is going to enter, you know what? Actually, we don't want to do it in terms of Z. We want to do it in terms of Y because, uh, because um, we're not always going to be along the plane. We might be down here, right? Uh, and so really the X value depends on Y. It doesn't depend on Z, right? The X value beginning and ending. Um, so x goes from one side of that parabolic cylinder to the other. So x goes from, so this is probably not the order you want to do, but you know, we could do it. And now the next bit you have to kind of, the next bit's kind of tricky. You've got to change your, your viewpoint and think about looking at things kind of, you know, if you're looking at sort of the YZ plane, what are you seeing? Well, what you're seeing is, you know, um, you're seeing this line, Z equals two Y, and you're gonna see this bit, Y equals four, right? Which kind of represents the furthest extent. Um, the, you know, the cylinder kind of curves around like this and in behind, but if you're looking at it dead on, what you're actually seeing is a triangle, okay? So looking at that triangle, you can see that if we're doing Z next, Z starts at zero and ends at two Y. Two Y and Y, well, Y goes from zero to four, okay? The other three orders, um, we, could, we could work those out in principle if we, uh, if we were so inclined, but I think, um, I think three orderings is, is hopefully enough to give you the idea.